you might have accessed thousands of websites onto your personal computer using the browser. But you ever wondered like how internet knows where to take you when you try to type in any URL into the browser. Today we are going to talk about the domain name server which we also call it as a DNS and it acts as a backbone when you try to access any website using the URL. Let's take a friend's analogy to understand the DNS system in a very simplistic way. So I'm just going to take a two friends. On the left hand side you will see a Bob and on the right hand side you will see a John. So Bob has some evening plan for going out for a party but he doesn't know like how to call a John because he doesn't have his phone number. So how can he make a call to John and make him aware about the evening plans? Let's try to figure out like what are the viable options through which Bob can find the phone number of a John. If you remember back in old days when we didn't had a mobile devices then we used a book called telephone directories and in those telephone directories we had all the person's name along with the phone number. So if you don't know the contact number of that particular person then you can refer to that telephone directory you can search the person name and then you can find out the phone number. So the DNS works in the similar fashion. So when you try to type in any URL, then DNS server will try to find the IP address of that particular website. And once it finds the IP address of that particular website, it will take you to that particular website. So if you compare the analogy of DNS with this our friend's analogy, then here DNS will try to help Bob to find the contact number of John and once it finds the contact number of a John then it will uh, pass on that contact number to Bob so that Bob can make a call to John. There are total five steps from where you enter the URL in the browser till you access the website onto your browser. Let's try to break down all the steps individually and see how this domain name resolution of a website works. Starting with the step number one, which is going to be the user input where user is going to input the URL. Second one is going to be the recursive resolver. Third one is going to be the root server. Fourth one is going to be the TLD server, which we also call it as a top level domain server. And the fifth one will be the authoritative server. Let's try to understand each individual step in more detail. So the first step would be where user inputs the URL. So here user Bob inputs the URL in the browser. Then the second steps comes in where is the recursive resolver comes into play and that's where your internet service provider which we also call it ISP tries to find the domain name. In the third step which is our root server where our root server is going to find the top level domain server which will contain our actual DNS entries. In the fourth step which is our TLD server and that TLD server is going to point to our authoritative server. And in the fifth step, the authoritative server is going to respond back with the IP address, which is the actual IP address of your website. Now we have seen the steps like how the IP address of a website is written when you try to enter the URL in the website. Now let's talk about the DNS records and these DNS records are of four types. The first one is the A record, the second one is the C name, the third one is the MX record and the fourth one is the TXT or a text record. Let's start with the first one which is A record and which is the most important one. So A record is just your domain or your website. So for example this is jhook.com which is my own blog. I'm just going to show you all these records into my domain registrar as well as my hosting provider. But for the Time being just try to imagine that a, a record is just a URL name or a domain name of your website which points to the IP address of your, your server where the application or your website is hosted. So for here this A record will point to the IP address of my server where my web application or my website is running. The second in the list is the C name and the C name stands or used for the subdomain. So if for example I have a main domain which is jhook.com 
then with the CNAME, I can create multiple subdomain with my primary domain. So here, for example, you can see I can create a subdomain with the name like sub.jhook.com and that domain can either point to your main domain, uh, which is jhook.com or either it can point to some different IP address. So with the CNAME, you can just associate multiple subdomain with your primary domain. The third in the list is the MX record and which is generally used for configuring your mail server setting. For example, if I want to create an email which is like rahul at the red jhook.com because I own that particular domain, then in that case, I'm just going to use the MX record for managing the email server setting of my particular domain and the email associated with my domain. So here I'm just going to create some MX record. So these MX record is going to communicate to my authoritative server so that I can set up some SMTP setting for sending and receiving those mails. And at last there is a TXT record and these TXT record are just generally used for defining or verifying the authority of that particular domain. So for example, uh, jhook.com which I have purchased for myself and if for deployment or just making some changes to my domain if someone tries to verify the authenticity that i own that particular domain then in that case that particular service provider will give me a tax record and that tax record i need to insert into my domain name setting so that they can verify that yeah i'm owning that particular domain and that's where we try to use the tax record for let me show you the domain name setting or domain name server setting of my particular domain which I own. So here is my domain which is jhook.com which is active and it is hosting my own blog. And this domain I have initially purchased from Google domain but then later on it has been taken care by Squarespace. So that doesn't matter but the key thing over here is this is the domain uh, which I am owning and this is the website or the DevOps blog which I have been maintaining. But here in the domain name setting there is a special thing which you need to be very careful when you try to manage or uh, play around with these kind of a DNS and name server record. So on the left hand side you will find the domain name server. So just click on it and these settings are pretty much common in every services from where you purchase the domain. So here you will find the domain name server setting and here you will find the domain name server which are like a NS1 site ground, NS2 site ground. And the site ground is the service which I'm taking to host my own blog. So let me show you the site ground control panel also where I will show you the A record, CNAME record, MX record and the TXT record as well. And here is the control panel of my site ground where I'm hosting my website. So here you can see this is my domain and here you will find the records which I have just explained which is A record, CNAME record, MX record, then TXT record and there are apart from these record there are uh, like a AAA records and there are some SRV record. But generally we try to stick or try to use the A, A record, CNAME record, MX and TXT record. And also here in the uh, manage DNS records, you will find all the records which are like I have been creating so far for managing the domain name of my particular website with the site ground. So here you will find a different record like a tax record over here, MX record. Here you can see it is used for mailing. And also there is a A record uh, where I'm just configuring www.jhook.com, also jhook.com. So if someone enters www, then it will also redirect to the jhook.com. And even if someone enters the jhook.com, then it will also redirect to the same website. So this is how I'm just trying to manage the different records of my particular domain. So these are the settings which you will get once you uh, purchase any domain and then that domain is associated with these many records. All right, so now I have shown you like what are the different A records of my particular own domain. And since I am owning that particular domain, so I can go and uh, view the settings of my domain registrar as well as the uh, DNS record. But being a developer, DevOps or a cloud specialist, you don't have the owner permission to verify the domain 
because that particular settings are controlled by some super admin with a very limited uh, privileges or limited access to modify those settings. So from a development perspective, how you can run some utility command to verify the A record, CNAME record, as well as the TXT record and MX record of the domain. And for that, we are gonna use the command NSLOOKUP. So let's take a look onto the NSLOOKUP command. So here I'm just gonna type NSLOOKUP and then followed by my domain, which is jhook.com and hit enter. And here you can see it will just point you to the IP address of my server, which is this one ending with 134 starting with 35. So let's take a look onto the uh, domain name setting. And here you can see this is the domain. And here you will find the IP address, which is pointing to my server where my blog is hosting. Okay, so that we have seen uh, and we can uh, see the IP address, but how about the A name, C name, TXT and MX record? For that, what you need to do, uh, I'll just clear the screen. You need to uh, modify the command and in, with that command, you still gonna use the NSLOOKUP command, which is this one. After that, you need to put the flag, which is type, and then you need to type in the record type. So here I'm just gonna type the TXT followed with the domain name. And with this command, it will just give you the TXT record of that particular domain and hit enter over here. And here you can see this is the TXT record of that particular uh, domain. And here you can see this is belonging to this particular domain. And these are the addresses for that particular TXT record of that particular domain. Similarly, let's try to find the C name. So I'm just going to use the same command, but instead of TXT over here, I'm just going to put C name over here. And here you can see, uh, can't find uh, for jhook.com because I have not set up any subdomain for my particular website. That's why the answer is can't find. Anyway, I'm just going to find some other uh, records. So for example, let's try to find the MX record over here. And here you can see these are the uh, mail server setting record for my domain which there are three records which i have been using for managing the email or the mail server setting associated with my primary domain so these are the record which belongs to mx category or the mx record type so that was a very short session on how the DNS works, how to manage your DNS record and what are the different types of DNS record exist uh, when you're managing the multiple domain. So I hope this particular tutorial will help you to clear out those doubt on DNS. And if you have any question, then please put down into the comment section and try to follow uh, this particular channel for various such topic based on DevOps, networking and cloud. So see you into the next session. Till then, take care and bye-bye.